CataractCoach.com. A monocular patient with pseudo exfoliation. Look at that pupil. Good lens density too. Luckily, a healthy optic nerve. Now, the patient is the mother of a local LA ophthalmologist. And I was asked to do cataract surgery for this patient because she is actually monocular. Tough, tough case here. The other eye is, in fact, no light perception. You can see as we try to put some anesthetic in the eye, patient shies away a little bit. This is the maximum dilation with 10% phenylephrine, tropicamide, cyclopentylate, all the above. And the question is, what's your approach going to be? And you can see the patient also has marks on the cornea for a torque lens. That's a steep axis of about 11 degrees. So that's against the rule of stigmatism. Two diopters worth. So you definitely want to get that torque lens in the eye. The patient's 88 years old as well. So a patient has a delicate endothelium. And obviously all ocular structures are delicate. Doing a little bit of viscomedrisis here with our dispersive viscoelastic. Just try to get the pupil a little bit bigger. Notice how I don't do a big fill of viscoelastic. Maybe about 75% fill. And here's why. Because I'm going to actually put in more viscoelastic as I try to do viscomedriasis. So we'll make our main incision here using a diamond keratome 2.2 millimeters wide on the steep meridian. So at the 11 degree axis part, there it is, and slightly enlarging that to make a nice easy fit. And what would you do now? Pupil expansion ring, iris hooks, all are reasonable. But can you get away with doing less? And so, and do it in a safe and efficient manner. So I'm just gonna use a chopper in one hand Looks like a Sinsky hook in the other, and get a little bit of a pupil stretch here. And we did put that anesthetic in the eye to help numb the tissue, so the patient's not going to feel this. So there's a little bit of a stretch. Now be very cautious, especially with that hook, to not damage the anterior lens capsule. You know, a fraction of a millimeter could damage the anterior lens capsule and cause a lot of problems here. So luckily, no issues there. So that's enough of a pupil stretch. We don't want to do too much. Now we're doing Osher's technique of viscomedriasis. Injecting the viscoelastic there, pushing, 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 and getting that pupil expanded a little bit more. You can see a little bit of an iris sphincter there, tear to the left of your screen there at about the 9 o'clock meridian. That's much better. And look how the red reflex improved also as we're able to get more of the coaxial lighting posterior into the deep part of the eye, into the, into the vitreous cavity. So now we can see we can have a reasonable pupil. Let's measure it. It's about 5 millimeters. So we want to make this rexus right up against that pupil margin. We don't want to have a small baby rexus here. So especially remember, pseudo exfoliation, the patient's going to have a higher tendency for capsular contraction, phimosis, etc. So getting this rexus done very carefully up against the pupil margin. We want about a 5 and a quarter, maybe 5 and a half millimeter diameter capsular rexus. Really coming out pretty nicely at this point. Now for nucleus removal, you know our viscomedriasis is just temporary. As we take out some viscoelastic, that pupil's going to come down a little bit. So what's the approach going to be for nucleus removal? And let me tell you what my approach is. I want to do iris plane phaco. Let me explain. We'll do some hydrodissection here, and I want the pupil, the iris, to hold the nucleus as I do the chopping. That keeps the pupil expanded, keeps the iris away from me, and allows me to continue. So watch carefully, getting a little bit of hydrodissection, nice and easy. Notice how we also lose viscoelastic coming out of the eye. So the nucleus is now partially out of the bag, but still under the iris. I want to get it up more. I really want to lift that nucleus up. So more viscoelastic going in here, dispersive agent. And I'm going to try just to use that also, the cannula, to help lift up and dial the nucleus up out of the capsule bag. So here it goes, dialing it up nice and easy. And now I'm going to dial up even more through the main incision and now recoat the endothelium as well with an additional aliquot of dispersive viscoelastic. So there's the nucleus. And see, I'm just dialing it up with that tip of the cannula. That's going to be very helpful now. Now the nucleus is being held in place. Now I can put the phaco probe in. We're going in bevel down here, going into the nucleus. And the goal is with that chopper to split this nucleus in half right off the bat. So buzzing with the phaco probe, chopper goes around to the back side of the nucleus, and there's a lot of force required here, a lot of effort, and boom, split. And we propagate that split all the way through, so now we have two distinct halves. The first half can be emulsified here at about the iris plane. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're saying, well, the, what are the corneal endothelium? You're too close to it. You know, you're really not. We have a nice deep anterior chamber. We've got a sufficient infusion pressure, and we're trying to keep the phaco probe right about at the iris plane. In a case like this with pseudo exfoliation and very weak zonal support, I do not want to operate too much in the capsule bag. You want to do your divide and conquer in the capsule bag, go right ahead. But to me, that puts additional stress, unnecessary stress on the capsule bag, on the zonal support here. So you can see the first half of the nucleus is almost gone. 
So nice and easy with the Faco probe. Here comes the second half now. I'm gonna buzz it with the Faco probe again. Let's sub chop it. So bring it up, and you can see how big this nucleus is compared to that pupil. And let's break off another piece, a little bit more chopping, nice and easy. We are using Faco power modulations to help minimize the Faco energy. I'm using a, a pulse mode here with a low duty cycle, only about 30% duty cycle. You know what that means? You better go to cataractcoach.com and look at the FACO fundamental section. You need to know how to program your FACO machine. All right, rant over. Going back here now, taking down this nucleus, nice and easy. Remember too, you gotta protect that capsule bag. It's extra floppy in this case, 88 year old patient, suit exfoliation in the works. And I wanna be cautious because the capsule bag breaks what happens. Of course, a whole host of uh, problems, but you can't even put the torque lens in the eye then. Remember, the torque lens for two diopters of corneal astigmatism has to go in the capsule bag. So just being cautious here, especially now that nothing's weighing down the capsule bag, notice the position of my chopper, the smooth end down, just to protect the capsule, and going nice and easy, just taking these pieces down. I'm going extra slow here. I'm showing you the whole case today, start to finish, longer case here, about 10, 11 minutes. But that's okay. You got to learn by, you know, looking at these cases in real time. If you are bored, you can always hit the 2x button there on YouTube and crank through it, but there's a lot to be learned here. Then look at the last pieces come down, nice and easy, as slow as I can. I want stability there. There you go, nicely done. Now, you may think the hard part's over. No, no, no. Cortex removal is critically important. Because remember, you can put so much stress on the caps or bag and zonular support during cortex removal that you can break a zonular support. So looks like there's a little tiny fragment there of a nuclear chip. We'll push that in the probe. And then we're going to take out the cortex. And as I'm removing the cortex, I'm looking at the rex's edge, making sure it's not going to move. I don't want to see the rex is moving. That'd be a bad sign, right? Think about it. So now removing the cortex, nice and easy. I'm taking my time here, slowing things down a little bit. I have no rush. I need this to be a beautiful case. You can see the corneal marks that show the steep meridian, the 11 degree mark, where we're gonna place this axis of the torque lens. So capsule bags clean up pretty nicely here. Now, could you do a whole lot of capsule polishing? Yeah, I don't think you really need to in this case. And especially in this case where you're not gonna see underneath the anterior capsule rim because of the pupil size. And more importantly, how much do you wanna stress out that capsule bag in this 88 year old patient, right? I agree with you. So let's fill the capsule bag here. Now look behind the capsule bag, little tiny fragments of lens material in the anterior hyaloid face. And that's to be expected because the loose zonal support allows that. Now we need to put a capsule retention ring in this eye. It's going to help us with giving good support for our torque lens and keeping the capsule bag open. So we're going to use this uh, effort here using a hook, a Sinsky hook, to guide the CTR into the capsule bag. So let me show you how we do that. So here's the CTR, and here comes the Sinsky hook in the other hand. And as we put this inside the eye, just gonna get that Sinsky hook inside the loop, that eyelet of the leading part of the CTR. So once it's in there, now we can dial this in the eye, and now holding on or still using the injector now to release the trailing end, there it is, and now that same tip can be used to push that eyelet off the hook. And now you've got the capsule ring beautifully placed in the capsule bag in a very atraumatic way. And so now it's time to put the lens in. Here comes our lens, single piece of acrylic lens. And again, this is a T5 torque lens, which has about two diopters of astigmatism correction at the corneal plane. And so that's going to go in the capsule bag. Now you can see just how small the eye is and even the pupil is compared to that six millimeter optic. So we know that's a six millimeter optic. And so let's get that haptic to open up. We'll get this positioned. You definitely need to still go behind the optic to remove viscoelastic. Remember, especially with the torque lens, you don't want it to misrotate due to having too much um, retained viscoelastic. So going behind the optic, nice and easy, take out all the viscoelastic that's behind there. When we filled the capsule bag with a cohesive viscoelastic, so it should come out pretty easily and come out cohesively in one big clump like it just did. Now let's get this torque lens rotated into the correct meridian, lifting up the iris there a little bit just to see where we're at. Again, there are little tiny fragments of lens material that went through the zonular support and behind the posterior capsule and basically at the anterior hyaloid face. Those little fragments are going to go away in the inflammatory cascade. The patient's just going to get some steroids in the post-op period. Again, that's to be expected. You can't avoid that. So here we go, getting that lens lined up where we want it. We can do a little bit more final checking here. Sealing up the main incision. You can see it's a nice incision. No fake wound burn. Nice and easy. Clean incision. 
Now going inside the eye, sweeping around, making sure there's no retained um, viscoelastic or even lens material. And let's just dial that lens over just a little bit more. Get it lined up just where we want it. And once we have those marks of the torque lens lined up with the torque marks on the cornea, then we're going to be good to go here. So you can see that Purkinje images aren't perfectly lined up right now, so there's a little bit of parallax. But we'll do a little more sweep. This is BSS injecting it underneath the iris just to make sure there are no retained lens pieces here. And again, getting that lens just tip, tipped over just a bit more to get it perfectly lined up. And now we're happy. There's some Triumph Cinelone Preserve Free. Got to quell the post-op inflammation. It does not last long in the eye. It'll be mostly gone tomorrow morning. And certainly with a couple days, it's, it's out of the eye. The AC turns over every 90 minutes, right? 18 times a day. So do not worry that you're going to have some issue with IOP spikes. Beautiful end of the case. Nice low pressure. Let's make sure the incisions are watertight. Beautiful. Fun case. Here's post-op day one. Let me show you. Totally clear cornea. Yes, this is a post-op day one picture. Patient was so thrilled. The patient's daughter gave me such a sweet thank you note. This is thank you so much for taking good care of my mom. As an ophthalmologist myself, I know the difficulty the surgery was, and I really appreciate your fantastic job. Wow, that's an honor for me. Such a pleasure to operate on fellow ophthalmologists and their family members. But you can see, look at that picture again. It is a clear cornea. Patient was absolutely blown away. Aim for a post-op result of about minus one. Gives good all-around vision for this patient around the house, etc. And you can see a little bit of triamcinolone particles at that inferior part of your screen there, at the paracentesis. But again, otherwise, it's all pretty much gone. And patient had a beautiful outcome. Thanks for watching this really fun case. And again, always a pleasure to be able to help a fellow ophthalmologist.